Earnings expected. Uh, so what do we actually think of what will happen uh, on the market today? Well, it's going to be a quiet day today. I was walking to work and there's not one coffee shop open in the city. And that's really because most of Australia is on holidays. The only areas that, we, that are open are Victoria and Tasmania. But of course, the Australian share market is open, although it is a non-settlement day. What's going to add to the low volumes is the golden week in China, where we do see the Chinese markets close the whole week. But it does look like a weaker start for the new quarter. We did see some weaker leads from global markets coming through on Friday. The U.S. market was down by 0.5 percent. We've got the SPY futures pointing to a 0.7 percent fall. And although copper and oil were up by 0.4 percent, we have a look at some of our stocks which are traded overseas. A negative lead uh, from the likes of BHP and Rio as well. In London, we saw BHP down by 0.4 percent, while Rio Tinto was flat. But the U.S. ADRs, the American Depository Receipts, showing a bit of weakness. We saw BHP uh, ADRs uh, down by around about uh, 1 percent. We also saw uh, Rio Tinto down by 1.4 percent and then if we have a look at some of the bank ADRs well Westpac was down by 1 percent and Commonwealth was down by 1.3 percent so certainly pointing to a weaker session and I guess one of the things that has the market nervous are the Spain um, what's happening in Spain we did see the Spanish stress test coming out on Friday and they came in on expectations looks like seven banks will need capital and seven won't and it does look like a total of about 59.3 billion euros will be needed there but I think what the market is worried about is a potential down downgrade from Moody's and an expectation that that's going to happen for Spain and of course China growth concerns also dominating as well. Yeah and we'll get a pulse check on all of that and gosh about an hour's time now. Uh, what just coming off some lows from last month just let's put this one into context how are we looking mm -hmm. in the round? If we have a look at the Australian market, we've actually seen a pretty good quarter for the Australian uh, share market. We saw a rise of about 7.1%, making it one of the best performers around the region. It was only the Korean Kospi which managed to outperform with a rise of more than 8%. And of course, one of the worst there was China, and those China numbers are going to be important because one of the key concerns that the market has at the moment are the growth concerns around China. We have seen the HSBC PMI numbers coming out on the weekend, and that came in at a reading of 40. 7.9. Now that is up slightly from August, uh, which saw a read of 47.6. But of course, we'll see the official PMI numbers during the session today. If we have a look at those HSBC numbers. The numbers were pretty uh, similar to the flash PMI numbers that we saw on the 20th of September. I guess a few differences. We did see the new export uh, sub new export order subcategory uh, looking a little bit weaker, although the employment subcategory did look like it was uh, stabilizing. But I guess all eyes on that PMI number are uh, coming out of China. But of course, we're not going to see much of a reaction from the Shanghai Composite with the Chinese market closed all week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, is it going to be a quiet week? Um, or, you know, given we can't take direction from China, or is there enough else going on across the rest of the globe to actually keep it busy? Brooke, I think it's actually going to be a busy week outside of uh, Asia. Over here will be dominated by the fact that China's on holiday and, and I guess uh, part of the, our week we see most of Australia on holidays. But looking globally and we get uh, global PMIs from all over the globe. We'll be watching the China ones but we'll also be watching the US, the UK, the Europe ones very closely. We've already seen the Japan market PMI numbers and they uh, came in a little bit stronger than August. In August we saw a read of 47.7. In September we've seen a read of 48 there but I guess it really is global PMI read or global manufacturing read and this is important because there is a concern that we are seeing the trade uh, cycle slowing down uh, globally. Also if we have a look it's going to be central bank decision week. We not only see a rates decision out of the RBA with the market uh, pricing in a 66 percent chance of a rate cut in the month of October. We'll also see central bank decisions from the Bank of Japan, the Bank of England, uh, the, the, the European Central Bank as well. So we'll be watching all those rate decisions and the commentary coming out of that very closely. And of course, it's also Jobs Week. We will get jobs reports out of, uh, out of the U.S. non-farm payroll numbers on Friday. That's going to be a big one given the U.S.'s concern around the employment numbers. So while the Asian markets do look like they're going to have a quiet week, it still looks like it's going to be a monster week outside of Asia. Mm. And already there are some sort of in, in that camp on rates that are saying tomorrow it's going to be a very close run thing. Yeah. Uh, what will you be watching for as, as key catalysts? 
Well, we, we will be watching uh, the, the rates decision closely given that uh, expectations are pretty high that we are going to see a rate cut in October. Some economists are holding off till a rate cut in November, but that's only because they're waiting for the CPI or the inflation numbers uh, and they believe that the RBA will wait for those numbers before making a decision. But if we have a look at inflation, it hasn't been a problem in Australia. It's been extremely tame. So most economists are predicting that we will see an October rate cut. Some of the reasons behind and this are, of course, concerns around global growth and the slowing growth environment and also the relatively high Australian dollar, which has come off a fair bit over the last couple of sessions. So that's going to be a big one for the Australian market tomorrow at 2.30. Uh, and, of course, if we do see a rate cut coming through because that hasn't been 100% priced into the market, that should be an overall positive for most sectors of the Australian share market and that should be a negative for the Aussie dollar.